Martin and the Wildcats have their fans in a frenzy. Michael Beasley and this fantastic freshman class have given the Cats hope. With the play of the Beast from the East, K-State is pumped. Kansas runs into Bramlage with all the confidence and skill of an unbeaten team that wants to silence the crowd here. The Jayhawks have reason to applaud as they soar above the crowd. KU and K-State on a collision course tonight from the Little Apple. The refrains of the Wabash Cannonball reverberating through the halls of Bramlage Coliseum. These fans hopeful that the streak will come to an end here today. The streak, you ask? I don't think you need to ask that if you live in a sunflower state. The Jayhawks have never lost at Bramlage. 19 straight, 24 straight overall. These two teams coming into this game both ranked for the first time since 1958. When you look at the standings, there's a great reason for this optimism for both these squads, both of them unbeaten in the Big 12. Of course, Kansas unbeaten overall this year, the number two team in the land. Well, hi again, everyone. I'm Dave Armstrong, along with Paul Split. Our Split, we've talked a lot about the streak this week. In reality, what does it mean to these two teams? I think it means a whole lot for the 12,000 Wildcat fans in the building here tonight. It means a lot to our viewers across the state. But for these two teams, they've had very little to do with the last 24 years, maybe two of the last three years. Michael Beasley has caught the attention of everyone in the land and certainly caught the attention of the Kansas Jayhawks with a quote that said, we'll beat them here, we'll beat them there, we'll beat them anywhere. And that's one of the things that he has said that has certainly drawn the ire of the KU faithful. Well, it is the kind of quote that will grab every Everybody's attention. He said that several months ago, and the media has gotten a lot of mileage out of that. But it's time to put the quotes away. Time to put the sneakers on. And when they put the sneakers on, two guys will be watching closely. Not only Beasley, but Brandon Rush of the Jayhawks. Brandon Rush was challenged some three weeks ago by his coach to be more aggressive offensively. He has responded with 17 three-pointers in the last five games. And Michael Beasley, well, what else can you say about him? The best player in the league, best player in the country. Well, maybe certainly he'll be in contention for it. Well, the Wildcats hopeful that ending almost a quarter century of dismal activity against KU here in Manhattan. The Jayhawks and the Wildcats and the opening tip is next. Big 12 game is brought to you by Phillips 66. Gasoline specially formulated to clean fuel injectors, increase performance, and above all, help maximize mileage. By Champion, how you play. By Advance Auto Parts, we're ready in advance. And by Red Lobster, for a short time, pair your two favorite shrimp creations together at Red Lobster. Welcome back to Brownlitz College in the student section, all fired up, trying to get warm. They've been out in the cold since noon yesterday, waiting out, camping out in anticipation of this game between the second-ranked Jayhawks and the 24th-ranked Wildcats of Kansas State. They stayed ranked again. They were ranked earlier this year as high as number 18. Here's the lineup for the Jayhawks. You see a very senior-laden lineup with two seniors in this lineup, including Russell Robinson and Darnell Jackson, along with Darrell Arthur, Brandon Rush, and Mario Chalmers, three guys that were McDonald's All-Americans. For the Wildcats, a freshman lineup. Two seniors, three freshmen, Young and Stewart in the backcourt, Sutton, Walker, and Beasley in the front court. And we should note that Andre Gilbert, not starting, will not play out with disciplinary action. The Jayhawks are led by Phil Self, who is in his fifth year. He is 10-1 against the Wildcats. The one loss coming in the 2006 season at Allen Fieldhouse. Other than that, he has been almost perfect in that winning percentage for Self, the best of any coach at Kansas that has coached more than one game. Frank Martin in his first year guiding the Wildcats, 14-4. Overall, he has done a terrific job in molding this young club, and they are playing some of the best basketball Basketball in the country, led by this man, Michael Beasley, who's averaging 25 points and 13 rebounds, joined by his mate, Bill Walker. It'll be Kansas with the ball first, dressed in their road blue uniforms. Look for Candace to push the basketball. They'd like to press the tempo here this evening, play up and down at a fast pace. The motion offense, three out, two in, look. 
Shot from the wing is good. A three-pointer from Brandon Rush to begin things for the Jayhawks. Over his last five ball games, he shot almost 60% from behind that arc. Kansas has not played a possession of zone defense so far this year. And certainly tonight they start out man-to-man. -man. They want to pressure the ball out front. You need to get that ball inside. Obviously, either Beasley or Walker having trouble doing so. Now Walker tries a three. Billy Walker was a perimeter player when the season opened. It was in early December. They built him into the power forward, sent him down low, but still very versatile. Drop step, and then a smother. They call a tie-up, and the ultimate possession arrow will give the ball to the Wildcats. Dave, you talk about the Kansas State team, just a couple seniors, three freshmen in the starting lineup. The freshmen are their most talented players, and they've got the experience at the place they need it. With Clint Stewart, the point guard, Blake Young, the number two guard, Kansas man-to-man -man pressure put all kinds of pressure on those two guards here tonight. That's what Kansas State really wants their experience. They're off with Darnell Jackson on Beasley, who throws up an air ball. Rebounded by Rush. Here comes Chalmers on the fly. Quickly gets it into the middle of the court on the wing for Robinson. That's no good. Arthur's tip. That's no good. And here comes Beasley. Both these teams very good offensive rebounded teams. Expect them to be able to get to the glass all night tonight. In fact, that should be one of the keys. Which is the team that's going to do the best job with the second chance opportunity? He's out in Colorado recently split, and Jeff Bizdelic, the first-year head coach of the Buffalo, saying that both Walker and Beasley, they treat it like it's a pass to them. They are so good on the offensive glass. Three-pointer from Stewart, knocked out of bounds, and it'll belong to K-State. Clint Stewart with the big basket, been shooting the threes a whole lot better once he got into conference play. They don't ask him to win ball games. They expect him to take care of the basketball and hit the open shots like that. Well, the Wildcats with a good start hitting two perimeter shots, but I know they want to work the ball inside more if they can. Well, you got to go inside to find Michael Beasley. He's an inside out player, first of all, but if you're going to leave Billy Walker right open like that, he's going to take it every time down. In the crowd, this one will belong to the Jayhawks, knocked out by Beasley. NKU will take over, trailing by three early on. They have won 28 of their last 29, 34 of their last 35, and if you go back to the middle of a couple of years ago, 68 of their last 75, an incredible run for KU. Kansas likes to run a lot of sideline picks, a lot of room to work inside for Darrell Arthur. Boy, tough shot for Arthur up over Walker. The thing about K-State this year that is kind of a departure from previous seasons, this team can flat go out and score. 75, 80 points is not out of the question. So many years here in Manhattan, the offense was keyed by the defense. And Kansas immediately 12 doubles. Michael Beasley. Three for three for the Wildcats from three-point range. And now they've had three different players hit from long range. That's one of the differences in this Kansas State team. That's why they're able to pile up the points. It's not just Beasley. It's versatility and balance in their offense. And Blake Young with his first foul. The ESPN Plus game is brought to you by Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Dave, one of the things we look for early on tonight is the Kansas guards looking to go on the dribble drive, try to penetrate that Wildcat defense from out front. That's something that has been playing Kansas State all season long. Perimeter defense, on the ball pressure. Keep guards out of the middle of their defense. Now Robinson off the screen. Look at that. But look at unbelievable Dominique Sutton coming from nowhere for the ball. And Young, a hold by Arthur. No basket. Dominique Sutton came from nowhere to block the shot of Robinson. Well, look at the block right there, Dominique Sutton. Now, he's one of those talented three freshmen that get the start in tonight's game. Didn't even join this team until semester. His first game was early January, so he doesn't have a whole lot of experience but playing well for K-State. Another three. No, this one's off target. But the long rebound to Stewart. Trying to fire it inside. They say it'll belong to KU. Good idea, tough pass to make. Had to throw, throw it through a couple defenders, get a little more air under that ball, let Beasley get up near the rim to get it, and probably would have worked. It's one thing Kansas State has really done well. They've actually been more efficient in conference play. Assist to turnover ratio is great. They've really cut down on their turnovers. 
Dahmer spins into the lane, but he traveled with it. Dahmer is looking confused. Thought that was just a good move in the paint. So did his coach, Bill Self, but uh, travel, another turnover for KU, their second. Kansas State not having any trouble playing up to the speed of the Kansas Jayhawks in the first three and a half minutes. Now Beasley tries a three. That won't go, but there's Sutton again. That's not bothered. Off of Arthur, it'll stay with K-State. And Dave, again, there's that offensive rebound. Kansas State as good as anybody in this league as far as covering that offensive glass. First substitution of the game. Sutton has been a huge part of the Wildcats so far in this contest. Sasha Khan will check in for KU. Gets it on the low block. Tough to stop. There goes Robinson again, taking it right at Beasley, and Beasley got a piece of it. Kansas guards not having a whole lot of problem getting into that defense, but they've had some shots swatted away. Long three. Jackson there for the rebound. Walker trying one from beyond NBA range. He was burying those in the shoot around this afternoon and in the three game warm up tonight. And another turnover. Four already for KU, Michael Beasley. He's making some noise on the defensive end, and we're back after this from your friends at Phillips 66. Really similar. Yeah, they very are very, very, very much similar. We're lucky in the Big 12 that we get to see these guys in successive years. Kevin Durant was more of a perimeter player who could go inside, feathery touch from long range. Michael Beasley, primarily a post player who could step outside. He can get behind that three-point line, but about 25 points per game, great shooting percentage, and also a, a double-digit digit average in rebounds per game. He is the fourth-leading scorer in the country, the top rebounder in the country, and this one tipped away. Here comes Robinson and Rush. Little two-man game, and Robinson gets it to go. Sutton thought he had drawn a charge. Well, he did the right thing. He knew he was outnumbered, was in some real trouble, so step up, try to get in the way of one of the guys coming down the floor, see if you can get the charge. Well, and not this time, and Rush was there making it one and done for K-State. K-State, as soon as the shot goes up, they're releasing one player, occasionally two players, trying to take away the transition game from Kansas. And Arthur hits from the top of the key. Another timeout for Kansas State. Boy, this game is spun on a dime, hasn't it? It was 11-6 once upon a time for Frank Martin's Wildcats, and now look at him. Well, Frank Martin wants his team to stay consistent, stay positive, attacking on the offensive end and cover that three ball. Problem is, there are so many weapons out there in blue jerseys from Kansas, really hard to key on any one particular player. Kansas forces you to spread your defense. Well, if you have a question about what's happening around the Big 12 or with your favorite team, email your questions to our Studio 66 analysts, Reed Geddes and Stacey King. Big 12 Studio at ESPN.com. Tune in to see your answer as they answer that on the air. Big 12 Studio at ESPN.com. So now what adjustments does Frank Martin have to make? It looks like the Jayhawks so efficient on offense right now they can score at will. Well, they are scoring at will because they stopped turning the basketball over and they've gotten good looks every time down. Kansas State has lost some of their aggressiveness and quickness on defense, and also they're having a hard time running their offense. They're getting no penetration at all. Beasley's not getting many touches. Split the Jayhawks were two for their first seven. They're now five for their last six in this game. And a little full court pressure by the Jayhawks. A little zone pressure by Kansas. Now they have pressed very little early on this season. So they show zone and the full court pressure and drop back into their man to man. Stewart tries to drive it into the land of the Giants. Now back out to Kent. Kent shot so efficiently. Nobody got a body on him by the time he got near the rim. Had his strides all set, ready to explode off the floor. He got up over the top of Jarrell Arthur. And another basket by Sasha Khan, fouled by Kent. Sasha Khan with a spin move off the glass. And the Jayhawks have up the ante again on the Wildcats. 
Bucks, but they've been able to go inside on some pick and roll. Let's go inside the play. Well, you talk about inside the play. Kansas likes to run the sideline pick with their big man coming up. Several things they can do. First of all, you anticipate the pick if you're the pick if you're defending. Beaten on the baseline by Mario Chalmers right there. Show it again. Same side of the floor. Just pick off that guard and. Brandon Rush goes ahead and puts it on the floor. From that position, if they defend the guard and the ball handler, that post player can either slip the pick and go straight in. He can roll, seal off the defender. He'll get the shot. So the Jayhawks will inbound the balls. Yeah, underneath their own hoop. All the way out to Khan. Look out for the lob inside on a play like this. That was tipped away by Sutton. That's not over and back. Kansas State staying man to man. Now Frank Martin likes to change his defenses throughout the course of the game, but hadn't done it here tonight. Pass inside, and Arthur stepped on the baseline. It belonged to K State. The fifth turnover for the Jayhawks, and Blake Young shaken up. Well, that's something that Kansas State can ill afford to have happen already with one player suspended. And Andre Gilbert, they lose a long. Reaching wing player now Blake Young another one of their guards figures to put in big minutes here tonight. Be holding his hand, but then the trainer immediately put a towel over his right eye. So checking now for blood over there. Might have gotten poked in the eye. Might take a minute or two to get back into the ball game. Kansas with token pressure on the inbounds pass now drops into their man to man. Was off the foot of Khan. It'll stay with K State. They really need to have Blake Young get back into this ball game. He is their best on ball defender, and they're having a little trouble defending that perimeter here tonight. A little extracurricular going on in the paint. That'll be on Sasha Khan, his first foul. Two team fouls on the Jayhawks this half. Three team fouls on the Wildcats. Kansas not contesting the inbounds pass. Russell Robinson playing in the middle of the floor, making sure nobody from the white jersey cuts through the lane. Can't try his one. That one hit the side of the glass. Right there. Again, the offensive glass work done by Kansas State really paying off. Billy Walker, nobody ever got a body on him. He took it right to the front edge of the rim. Now Arthur, a little fade away. Nope. And Walker with a rebound. Darrell Arthur likes that little turnaround jump shot with a little fade to it. Touch, but couldn't get that one down. That's out of bounds. It'll stay with K-State. Nice touch by Robinson. Check it in for Kansas State. Big 12 leaders brought to you by Chevy and your local Chevy dealers. Look at the Darnell Jackson. That's actually in the top 10 in the country. Field goal percentage and Beasley right behind at 59%. Kansas State still having a hard time getting the ball in the hands of Michael Beasley. Now they're going to run a little sideline pick. Those two guys played against each other last summer in the 19 and under game. Yep. They were teammates there. And a foul on Arthur. That'll be the second on Darrell Arthur. So a decision to make for Bill Self. You leave Arthur in this game with two fouls here in the first half. Game situation usually dictates that with getting an even draw on the road right now. The score tied and better than 10 minutes left in the first half. Darrell will get a little bit of a rest. Kansas has some depth at those front line positions. Walker pulls up. That is good quickness because uh, Darnell Jackson does a nice job of sliding his feet on the perimeter on most cases, but Walker a whole lot quicker. You can see why Kansas State used him as a small forward early in the year. K State with six straight points. And that'll silence the crowd again, and we're even at 20. What a luxury it is to have a player like Sharon Collins coming off the bench. <laughs> can be a scorer, can be a go to guy. He's been playing well this year for Kansas. Can you think of another team where Sharon Collins would be coming off the bench? Uh, and this team, it really doesn't make any difference to these guys. Well, Billy Walker feeling it right now. He nails a three. 
That's taking on the feel of a heavyweight prize fight. Yeah, it is. Guys just going toe to toe and landing one haymaker after another. Now a whistle and a foul down low. Looks like they've got Bill Walker with a call, and that'll be two on Walker. Now Frank Martin, he has a decision to make, like Bill Self did a couple minutes ago. You've got your power forward with two fouls on him right now. He's got a little issue with one of the officials right now, saying his man got hooked and held. But the two fouls on Walker will stand. Certainly the difference for Frank Martin is he doesn't have the kind of depth Bill Self has at that position. You take Walker out, that's a big part of your one-two punch. Well, he is really a terrific athlete. They're going to get a player on the floor who can score in Darren Kent, who has more experience, but certainly not the athleticism or the potential of a Bill Walker. So Kent will check back in. A different type player altogether. And Bill Walker is coming off his career best 11 points against Iowa State. He had three threes in that contest. Just badly on a couple of threes so far here tonight. They have another similarity between these two teams with the way they put away. <laughs> Robinson picks up his first. Pullen gives them a spark at that guard position. Bounce pass to the wing and just a backdoor cut. He beats his man out front, takes it to the edge of the rim, gets two points, and he'll have a free throw. Pullen has never really played like a freshman here at Kansas State. He came in with a lot of confidence. Number five, Robert Stewart, and 25, Rush. And now Pullen going to the line, a 71% free throw shooter. As you mentioned, Split, he started the first nine games of the year. He has been very efficient of late in his last five games, 20 assists and only four turnovers. It's kind of typical of this Kansas State team. They've been more efficient in league play than they were in the preseason. It took this team a little while to come together with some first-year players and a first-year coach. And a five-point Kansas State lead. Excuse me, four-point, 26-22 Wildcats. Four-point K-State advantage for Frank Martin, but playing now without Bill Walker. Kansas State goes to zone, a 1-3-1 half-court trap. First time they've shown the half-court pressure. First time they've shown zone tonight. They drop into the 2-3. And in and out for Chalmers, no good. Chalmers, you talk about a great three-point shooter, 48% on the year. Can't looking to Beasley. And knocked away from him, and Khan pokes it out of bounds. Little Apple of Manhattan, our location tonight, Bramlage Coliseum, a place the Jayhawks have never lost. 19 straight wins here, 24 straight wins overall in Manhattan for KU, one of the most incredible streaks in the nation in college basketball. With Paul Spudorf, I'm watching Michael Beasley get his first points in the game. Timeout, Kansas. Well, Beasley moving without the basketball that time. A little dump down pass from Darren Kent. Quick with that turnaround jump shot from the baseline. Sasha Khan gave him a little bit of room, and that's all the room Beasley needs. At 6'10", got a soft touch. He also fades away on that jump shot. No way to block that thing. And we'll see if the streak does end tonight. As you mentioned, Split, that streak really means nothing to these players. None of them were even born when the streak started in 1984. You know, golf fans and club pros, not too early to start thinking about the 2008 ESPN National Golf Challenge. Log on to ESPNGolf.com to sign up your course as a host or to find a local qualifying site in your area. Be a part of the search for America's best twosome. A great twosome here at Kansas State with Walker and Beasley. But well, when you saw Kansas State a year ago, you had a feeling that they were catching up to the Jayhawks, getting a little bit closer all the time, and then the way Kansas State has started off in conference play this year with a premier player like Michael Beasley, with Bill Walker coming back healthy again this year, thought you were drawing a little bit closer yet. We'll face off again the first of March over in Lawrence, just down the highway. In the half court trap by Kansas State, 1 3 1 zone. Kansas likes to attack the baseline against zone defenses. 12 4 run for the Wildcats. Take this six point advantage, their biggest lead of the game. Now inside, Stewart. No. Foul came first. No basket, no shot. 
Oh, Looks like a cut on Blake Young, and look, he's got a little bit of a cut on that left eye. On cut, the doctor. Eyebrow. cut doctor went to work, didn't he? Second foul on Young. So now Young has to join Mr. Walker on the bench. Well, it's a little easier for a senior to play with two fives. You expect those guys to be able to handle a situation like that a little bit better than a freshman would. Thomas again right down the paint. And there's Roderick Stewart cleaning up. They'll count the basket actually from Mario Chalmers. They say it was goaltending, so Chalmers' basket is good. And Dave, there is the quickness of the Kansas guards. Putting the ball on the floor, the ability to slash into the middle of the defense on the dribble drive, take it all the way to the front edge of the rim. That time setting a little bit late with that block. Well, what's that, three times now? The Jayhawks have been able to go in with no weak side help? Well, I think it's three or four times uh, with no help, and there have been a couple shots blocked besides that. Sutton, he can't get it to go, and Rush was there for the rebound. Now Stewart back to Rush, three-pointer, nope, off target. Khan fighting for the rebound, but a foul on Khan, and that's his second. So two fouls on Sasha Khan will get Darnell Jackson back into the game. Bill Self having to juggle things with now Messrs. Khan and Arthur with two fouls each. I believe Khan in the game with two fouls. Arthur has been sitting for the last three minutes or so. With Bill Walker on the bench for Kansas State. Darrell Arthur on the bench for Kansas. Sasha Khan's going to be asked to play with his two fouls. One of the reasons he's out there, he is the best post defender and their strongest rebounder. And giving it up to Beasley with Khan guarding him. And in isolation for Beasley right there. Had the entire side of the floor to work with. And a travel on the part of Sutton. Martin yelling at Sutton to hang out of the ball, and we're back after this from your friends at Phillips 66. Parent of that Wildcat fan, you can save some money here if the Jayhawks lose for the first time ever at Bramlage Coliseum. These students were camped out yesterday starting at noon, braving the cold temperatures, almost 800 strong, and then earlier today, Michael Beasley and the rest of these Wildcats went out and delivered pizza. Very, very hungry group. Phillips 66, proud to be the presenting sponsor of Big 12 basketball. Next time you're on empty, fill up with Phillips 66 gasoline, specially formulated to clean fuel ejectors, increase performance, and above all, help maximize mileage. Phillips 66, hardworking gas. And the Jayhawks with the ball. Kansas State guards now backing off a little bit out on the perimeter, giving a little room to the Kansas ball and Again, trying to draw the charge from Arthur. No whistle. And the Wildcats now see their six-point lead diminished to two. Back into Beasley. Double team. And Beasley sealed off. He's only one for four from the field so far. And now a whistle and a foul. This will be called on, is it Arthur? It is, and that's number three on Darrell Arthur. No sooner did he get into the game, and he'll probably have to leave again. That's because of the pressure that Kansas State is putting on that offensive glass. Arthur was never in good position to get that rebound, reached in across the top, and came away with the foul. So Darrell Arthur, who has six first-half points, he has to leave, and Bill Self has a little discussion with one of the officials. One of the fears for the K-State faithful was that Beasley might get in foul trouble in this first half. He has not, but KU has done a good job of keeping Beasley from scoring. Well, Aldrich now on the floor. He'll draw the man-to-man -man responsibility against Beasley to just get some help with the double team from James. Now Walker back in there. He has a dozen first half points, but he's playing with two fouls. And now a turnover by Walker. Walker scored a dozen points in nine minutes before picking up his second foul. There's a score from Columbia where Missouri playing without five of their players, all suspended by Mike Anderson, and Nebraska looking for their first Big 12 win. They have a four-point lead in Columbia. Nebraska's lost a couple games at home. Collins pulls up. That's wide left. Aldridge kept it alive, but Rush was out of bounds.
Six turnovers apiece. Self trying to encourage his team here on the road, trailing by two. With Collins a rest. Mario Chalmers will check back in for KU. Kansas likes to go to a five guard rotation, five perimeter players and three post players, all of which now working one of those post positions, man to man against Beasley. Got to figure Beasley's going to get some touches here going against another first year player. Talented players, Aldrich and Beasley. Head to head now in the middle. Walker. That three was halfway down and then back out again. Robinson was pulling set. Yes, he was. A foul on Robinson, his second. Boy, and that's terrific defense by Pullen right there. The Jayhawks attacking quickly. Thought they were going to beat everybody down the floor. And look at Pullen hustling, trying to get in a good defensive position. Now, he was moving, but he had enough of his body in front of the ball handler to draw that whistle. Well, he really got sandwiched in between Robinson and Cole Aldrich. Player. And Aldridge going out on the floor with it. Looking off a little bit, trying to take away that dribble drive first. Beasley. Aldridge stood his ground. Beasley got that ball pretty deep. He was in pretty close to the hoop. Quick ball movement gives Chalmers a three, nails it. Big bucket by Mario Chalmers and the Jayhawks back in front. And Chalmers not to the floor after he took that shot. Concentrations there, just keyed on the front of the rim. Now Beasley from the corner. Boy, what a touch he's got. Wow. Feathery touch for a big man. Chalmers knifes it himself in there. Walker, uh oh. That's an elbow by Walker in his third foul. Shaking his head as Walker goes back to the bench. Well, the drive is there because Beasley is well out on the floor, so the shot blocker not around. Walker, strong rebound trying to clear the area. Catches Chalmers above the left eye. Knocked him right to the floor. That's a pretty easy call for the official. Yeah, that really almost could be called flagrant. That was a high elbow to the eye of Chalmers, and now a lob inside to Aldridge. Aldridge able to get it back and then travel with it. Seven turnovers now for the Jayhawks. Based on the turnovers has actually slowed down a little bit. They had four turnovers in the first three minutes. So doing a better job of taking care of the basketball over the last seven or eight minutes. And when Kent can step out on the floor, he can shoot that shot even though he's 6'10". Inside again, Beasley. Rush right there. And look at the blue jerseys lurking in the area as soon as Beasley's going to make a move to the rim. Beasley now two for seven from the field. What a nice pass from Chalmers. Think about, think about Brandon Rush. He can go ahead and make that move, Dave, because he knows his teammates will find it. Kansas so unselfish with the basketball. Again, keep the ball alive if you're the ball handler. A little dump down pass to Rush breaking in behind the defense. Kansas last weekend had 32 field goals and 25 assists in that ball game against Nebraska. Great teamwork. And they won 84-49. Now Chalmers, he goes to the bench with his first foul. This game already seven points after scoring only three against Nebraska last Saturday. one for Pollen. He will get the bonus. Kansas has so much balance, Dave. They really don't have to score to have a good day. You mentioned Chalmers, just three points, but he also had seven assists, three blocks, no turnovers. <laughs> Pollen's hit all three free throws tonight. One of three free throws the Wildcats have shot. Really got to be impressed with the Kansas State freshman. They are stepping up and playing at the highest of levels here tonight. Paul Aldridge does a great job of setting solid picks for the Jayhawks. 
Tipped out. Last touch by Collins. Boy, good pressure by Clint Stewart. Brandon Rush got himself in a little bit of trouble right there, Dave, because he picked up his dribble in the open floor. Keep the dribble alive. You keep the attack alive. You pick up that dribble, you're just asking for problems. Clint Stewart, one of those guys that just seems to do the little things that help K-State win. Well, he's got average quickness for a point guard at this level, but he does a terrific job of handling the basketball. He has now become a glue guy for Kansas State. Maybe a little bit of a question of how much he could do earlier on in his career, but enough experience right now. He's a quality frontline player. Usually thought about a three, just hit one moments ago. Now Stewart. Beasley will take a three. A three-pointer for Beasley, his second straight. And he got that one down with two hands in his face. Cole Aldrich had one of them. Darnell Jackson was also taking a run at it. And now an offensive foul on Aldridge, working for position in the paint. So Michael Beasley starting to come to life for the Wildcats. Beasley with two three-pointers in the game. Tradition in history of the Big 12 Conference. Take a look at the tradition of the Wabash Cannonball. One of the great traditions here at Kansas State. Back in 1968, old Nichols Hall burned to the ground. Phil Hewitt was then the head director of music here. And the, lore, the folklore goes that the only piece of music saved from that fire was the music of Wabash Cannonball. They played it later that day at a Kansas State basketball game, and it has become a tradition here ever since. Great atmosphere here in Bramlage tonight. Hold out house. Easily again, quick move, tough shot. And the rebound fought for, coming over near us, and it will stay with Kansas State. Michael Beasley, two for two from three-point range, but only one for seven from two-point range. And State continues to work hard to get him the basketball. They're trying to run a high-low with Darren Kent. Head up high, looking inside. One of those big guys out of the middle of the floor with him. You can a little extra space for Beasley to work. Three-pointer. Not one go. Jackson's got the rebound. Two Wildcats on the deck, and that means Kansas has numbers. They get it to Rush. Rush, no, but there's Roderick Stewart with the putback. And there are those numbers getting a wide open shot and swarming the boards. It took the K-State players a little longer to get back defensively, and Kansas able to take advantage of that. Stops a 5-0 run for the Wildcats. Now back to Beasley. They show double team, and then Beasley telling everyone to clear out. And then he walked into a double team. Thought he was fouled, but he traveled. Kansas with a numbers advantage on their last possession. Quickly to the offensive end. Find the open shooter. Defense comes out to challenge the shot. Leaves that rebound area. Roderick Stewart finds himself all alone right next to the hook. A tightly played first half. We have had six ties, five lead changes. Kansas with a small lineup on the floor right now. Four out, one in luck. A lot of room to put the ball on the floor and find the driving line. Charged by Rush. And that'll be his first foul. <laughs> 19 remaining here, first half. Kansas State got off to a quick lead. This game, 11 to 4 early on. Came storming back, took a lead, and it's been a seesaw battle ever since. Now Beasley again, quick step. And then here comes the double team. Roderick Stewart knocks it out of bounds. But Beasley is getting the full attention of the Jayhawks here tonight. Well, he's drawn a big man out on the perimeter with him, and Darnell Jackson is normally very quick at sliding his feet. Watch how quickly he gets beat. Beasley, that first dribble is around that corner. Roderick Stewart got a hand on the basketball, touched it last. Enough contact to blow the whistle from the official. Beasley doing a little house cleaning. He's into the ball game, isn't he? He do windows. <laughs> oh man, he does I don't it all. Think we can afford it. Wow, look at that though. One for seven from two point range. Well, if you're Kansas State, you don't think that's going to continue throughout the night. And if you're Kansas, you're pretty sure it's not going to happen the rest of the evening. Clint Stewart picked up 
picked up the loose change. Earlier in that possession, good adjustment by Kansas State. They've been able to stay away from the traps out on the perimeter. Ran into one that time, but he's able to back out of it so Kansas couldn't get the steal. And this time the ball will go to KU. The rebounding edge has been in favor of K-State. Bill Self's team has been out rebounded 16-13 in this first half. And half of those rebounds have been on the offensive end for Kansas State. So eight offensive boards. So one of the big differences in this game is second chance opportunities for the Cats. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that Beasley and Walker and the rest of these Cats live on. Those second chance points. Well, Beasley, about a third of his rebounds are on the offensive end. Kansas has three different front line guys that have a third of their rebounds offensive. So both these teams attack the offensive play. This little floater off the glass for Brandon Rush, who's by far and away the leading scorer with a dozen points for KU. Walker has matched that dozen for K State, but Walker's on the bench with three fouls. Alone now on the floor for Kansas State. Big body inside that allows Beasley to step out of the floor a little bit. That's an offensive charge as Roderick Stewart was right there to greet him. All the Kansas swing players can handle the basketball. A little pump fake right there. Step by Cologne. Cologne's not anywhere near quick enough to stay up with a brand new rush on the perimeter. In fact, a lot of times Cologne hits the floor. Kansas State will go into his zone to kind of protect him in the middle. Especially when he was flying at rush like that out of control. It's an easy play for rush to get around him. So here comes the zone you were talking about. The 3 2 zone. Three pointer off, no good. And a scramble for the ball. Who's got it? And have a tie up here. Kansas will get it on the arrow. Mad scrum for the ball, and they're still looking for. Who had control? Beasley saying he had the ball and called time, but they're going to call a tie-up, and there goes Beasley back to work. Darren Kent was trying to get that timeout as well for Kansas State as soon as Beasley thought he had possession. Look for Kansas State to go straight up zone now with this ball coming in, bounce from underneath their basket. Beasley cleaning everybody's clock and cleaning the floor and cleaning the glass, and this he's just. Mr. Clean he just wants to keep this ball game rolling. He likes it. He's into it. <laughs> yeah, he is. His front court mate, Bill Walker, now just turned into a cheerleader. As he's sitting over on that bench. He's been there for a while. He picked up three fouls in this first half, along with a dozen points. Bob Ferry, the official over at the scores table. Self, what they have decided. Will took his head, so that's okay. And with 41 seconds remaining, Kansas State's playing man-to-man -man on that inbounds pass. So a little bit of a surprise there, and they'll stay man-to-man. -man. Stewart against Russell Robinson out front. Five-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock here in the first half. Tough passing inside, and a foul on Kent. And that's two on Darren Kent. Kansas going with that sideline pick and roll action again, just packing the ball inside. Now Kansas State defending from the inside out. That's a tough pass in traffic. The Darnell Jackson took it up against Darren Kent and drew the whistle. But the Jayhawks have gotten good minutes out of Roderick Stewart this half with Darrell Arthur sitting with three fouls. Roderick Stewart, let's not forget he was a starter earlier on this year when Brandon Rush was coming back from his knee surgery. But Roderick Stewart had a great preseason, a lot of minutes early on in the year. Could start for a lot of schools in this Big 12 conference. And the problems for the Jayhawks, probably the only real Achilles heel in this KU team so far this year, just 66% as a team from the line, although better in Big 12 play, 70%. As good as they were against Nebraska over the weekend, they struggled from the charity stripe, went 11 for 21 yeah. against the Huskers. And in this game, 3 for 4 for KU. Two-point contest. You see the time remaining in this first half. Cullen had to give it up. Stewart is matched up against Beasley. He'll give away about six inches in height. Beasley. Not long go. Kent fouled. 
with .8 seconds remaining. This Kansas State team starting to show some of the toughest of toughness of their head coach Frank Martin was battling hard on the glass. Beasley able to get the first shot over the top of Roderick Stewart. Very kid just staying with the offensive board work. There's Beasley with the jump shot off the front edge of the rim. Kent keeps it alive, takes it right back up. Looks like Sharon Collins will draw that foul. Wildcats lead largely contributed in this first half split to the offensive work on the glass. Can't, can't hit that free throw. Wildcats most likely are going to have a lead unless the Jayhawks hit a miracle shot at the buzzer. Kent has struggled from the free throw line all season long. And step out and hit the three ball. Struggles from the free throw line. Missed them both. And pulling it up at the buzzer. Jackson well off target. And they do it. Kansas State, though, they go off into their locker room with a two point advantage over the number two team in the country. The Jayhawks, who have won all 20 games this year and all 19 here at Bramlage Coliseum, trailing the Wildcats by a pair. Leading, don't forget, all part of a big week in Kansas City, the Phillips 66 Big 12 Women's Basketball Championship at Municipal Auditorium in downtown KC. For tickets, you see the number on your screen or visit www.ticketmaster.com. With Paul Splitorf, I'm Dave Armstrong. We are here at Bramlage Coliseum where Nicole Oldie, Kendra Wecker, Two great stars for the Wildcat women's team, who, by the way, are ranked number 18 in the country and 6-0 in conference play. In fact, the Wildcats and Gonzaga, the only two schools in the country that have both the men and the women unbeaten in conference play. A lot of good things happening here in Kansas State this, this winter. A good first half for the Cats as they lead by two headed into the second half. Well, you would think that if you're KU, you're saying let's keep doing a good job on that man Michael Beasley his points really came from the outside Bill Walker starts the second half on the bench with three fouls and you also would like to do a better job on the offensive glass Kansas State they just want to shoot better only 40 percent in that first half Kansas State will continue to look for Beasley every time down here in the second half and Ken is a good passer for out on the perimeter he's a good shooter from out on the perimeter so they can put extra heat on that first state offense. Now Robinson with Rush and Fat Man Darnell Jackson. Wow. Darnell Jackson thought he was going to be the trailer on that play. Ends up with the dunk in that three on one break. And this had just one steal in that first half. An unusually low number for them. First possession of the second half, they get their second steal of the night. With players like that, we start all over again. Tied at 38. The seventh tie of this game. Now Beasley. And a whistle and a tie up. And a foul inside on Jackson. Jayhawks so good with the steals. Russell Robinson, the point guard. You figure it's going to be Robinson rush on the two-man break, but the pass goes deep to Cornell Jackson, who's trailing it. So reward the big fella for getting out and running the floor. I'm going to say here that that was a shooting violation, and they're going to send Beasley to the line. Beasley, a 74% free throw shooter. Updated on what's going on in Columbia tonight. Look at that at the half. Missouri, that's that's a game effort on the part of the Tigers, who are missing five players all suspended by Mike Anderson. And of course, they're going to miss Stefan Hanna for maybe the rest of this year, out four to six weeks. Very down to six scholarship players. Well, the suspensions that they're taking on this week. And two free throws by Beasley get him double figures again. He's been in double figures in every game but one this year. Ball game's been tied seven times. There have been six lead changes. Robinson, he forces his way inside, and then Khan can't get the offensive stick back. One of the things Kansas did well early in the first half was the dribble drive of their guards, really attacking the Kansas State defense. They open the second half here trying to do the same thing. Bill South really giving it to one of the officials for not calling any contact on the drive by Robinson. Beasley have rejected by Khan. On the 28 blocks this year. Beasley goes after him again and then has it stripped away. Beasley back out to Stewart. Almost stripped from him. A mad scramble for the ball. Blake Young. That won't go. 
Sutton, no, and Hahn finally clears the glass for KU. How good was Blake Young at that last possession for Kansas State? Two different times he kept the possession alive. Now he's got a board. Huge board by Blake Young. One and done as Robinson can't hit from three-point range. The Jayhawks now three for ten from outside the perimeter. Aaron Kent, every time he touches that basketball, is looking inside for Beasley. What happens, quarterback? Wow. He's looking like a quarterback, looking to find his receiver. And a tough shot from Beasley. How did he do that? A four-point Kansas State lead. Four straight points by the Wildcats. And this crowd comes to life again. With that sideline pick for Kansas again, well defended by the Cats. And a blocking foul by Kent. As he was trying to seal the baseline. That's a third foul on Darren Kent. Kansas State using their big guy Darren Kent as a passer. The entry pass over the top of the defense, the reverse hook shot underneath the backboard by Beasley. And a soft touch. Always under control. About as smooth as they come. Picked off by Sutton and he lost the handle. And a little bit too excited. ESPN Plus game brought to you by Whataburger, just like you like it. This game is just like we like it. Pretty important possession for Kansas right here. Already trailing by four. Kansas State with a lot of energy starting out this second half. A little dipsy do by Collins that won't go. Once again, Kansas guards able to put the ball on the floor and get to the middle of the defense. Just can't make the shot. Well, they're not finishing. And Beasley again. Triple team Beasley, that was blocked, and Stewart. With a fight for the rebound, a tie-up. The ball will go to the Jayhawks. Every time Beasley makes a turn, he sees nothing but blue jerseys. You could take a Kansas team picture in that defensive stand right there. <laughs> Some attention. Four for 13 from the field, Beasley. Now Khan. Did he walk? He did. 12 turnovers for the Jayhawks. Kansas has forced Beasley to play some defense tonight, and he hasn't committed a foul yet. Bill Self is really upset with all the officials in this contest right now thinking that they're letting play inside go and no calls. And Beasley the benefit of the doubt inside. Remember Kansas State continues to play without Bill Walker. He's still over in their bench. That'll be a foul. And Kent playing with three. Beasley. Walker a cheerleader cheering on Beasley. Six straight points for K-State. And a timeout for KU. So Michael Beasley leading the charge with Walker on the bench. It's Beasley with 14, and we're back after this from your friends at Phillips 66. So we welcome you back to Bramlage Coliseum. And with Chalmers fouled inside, that on Clint Stewart. And Chalmers is still down, holding his left wrist. Second foul on Stewart. Kansas guards really trying to attack that Kansas State defense. Sasha Khan came up that time and set a pick out on the perimeter, letting Chalmers get around, and then Chalmers just lowering that shoulder, headed down the lane, forcing the defense to step up and stop him. And Stewart did it for a big time contact there. And they didn't give Chalmers a shooting situation there. Bill Self was screaming about that as well. It looked like he was putting the ball up as the contact was being made. And the guards on the dribble weave right now. There's the attack. And a foul inside. Is this on Beasley? No, it's not. It's not on Beasley. So that's a break. It's on Sutton instead. First one on Sutton in Kansas State, keeping the Jayhawks at arm's length. It's matching their biggest lead, 44-38, six straight points 
by the Wildcats. We'd like to take a, th a moment to thank our Big 12 corporate partner, Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Speaking of chickens, they're on display here at Bramlage Coliseum. The Wildcat fans are going to end this streak against the Jayhawks, a streak that started way back in 1984. This is the 263rd meeting between the Jayhawks and Wildcats. First game ever played, 1907. Now Chalmers at the line. Don't forget if you have a question about what's happening around the Big 12, you can contact our studio, Big 12 Studio at ESPN.com. Tune in to see the answer from Reed Geddes or Stacey King. Eight points now for Mario Chalmers. Darrell Arthur now back out on the floor for the Kansas Jayhawks. Let's see if K-State goes right after him. That could be matched up against Darren Kent. If Kent plays it like he has been, he'll be out on the perimeter looking to get an entry pass into Beasley. Kansas drought from the field. They scored first bucket of the second half. Haven't scored from the field since. Beasley made his move to the basket there. He looked up, he saw five blue jerseys between him and the front of the rim. There they are again. He sees nothing but help defense as soon as he puts the ball on the floor. Ten shot well short, knocked out of bounds by Young. It'll belong to KU. That's Sharon Collins walking the ball up the court. again rush Stewart quickly closed on him Kansas State might be having trouble defensively out on the perimeter but their interior defense has been outstanding Arthur tough shot off the glass no good and that's that for inside defense again making it tough for everything from inside 10 feet six more rebounds for K-State than KU tonight K-State's got four more offensive rebounds here in the second half alone. They have 11 at the half. That's how the Wildcats are hanging around in this one. Not just hanging around, but a four-point lead for K-State. Now Jackson lined up against Beasley. Terrific entry pass for Kennedy. No shot. Ball came first from Rush. And then he picks up his second. And now Bill Walker, finally, after sitting for five and a half minutes plus, he'll see his first action of the second half. And playing with three fouls, picked up three in the first half. I think it's a good time for Frank Mark to put him in this game right now. Well, you got to get him in sometime. You yeah. need to try to get back up to game speed. You talk about somebody who's better than game speed when this game started. He just dominated things early on for Wild Wildcats. Good help defense by Kansas right there. Well, Arthur stepping up, taking away that dribble drive. Easily against Khan. Khan will give up a lot of quickness out there on the perimeter. And they switch with Arthur. Pullen. That one go well short. Quickly the Jayhawks push the ball. Now rush for three. That's a little strong. Khan keeps it alive. Collins can't get it to go, but there's Arthur with the tip home. Beasley that time had the inside rebounding position, but too, pushed too far underneath the basket. This is the opportunity for Darrell Arthur. Back to a two-point contest. Walker, and a foul here on Arthur. That's his fourth. <laughs> Think about Bill Walker. You've got to respect his ability to put up that three ball. So defensively, you're forced to come out on the perimeter with him. And with Arthur stepping up, you know Walker's going to put the ball on the floor and try to get around him. Step up, hand up in the air, try to close out the shooter. A little too much contact on that dribble drive. Beasley looking for some room again. Nails another three. That's quite a tandem, Walker and Beasley. His third three of the game. He's three for three from three-point range. Now Collins answers it the other end. Collins can be the go-to guy for the Jayhawks. He's been a consistent shooter from long range this year. 
Jackson slides his feet pretty well. He'll have to defensively there on Walker. Jackson Bunkin. Well, Darnell Jackson picks up his second foul. Kansas State doing a nice job that time down, Dave, stretching out the Kansas defense. All out of the perimeter with perimeter players and stepping their bigs out on the floor now. Trying to be the presenting sponsor of Big 12 basketball. Next time you're on empty, fill up with Phillips 66 gasoline. Specially formulated to clean fuel injectors, increase performance, and above all, help maximize mileage. Phillips 66, hard-working gas. Michael Beasley now will get a breather. The 12:51 mark again. A good move here by Frank Martin with a media timeout coming in 51 seconds. He left the floor for a couple minutes in the first half. Similar kind of situation. Kind of stretch out that rest. This might be the only break he gets in the second half. Mm -hmm. Let's see how Kansas attacks it with Beasley on the bench right now. The guards have been the focal point here in the second half. Trying to get in the middle of the K-State defense. They're not getting much out of the post right now. They're trying to make it a perimeter game. Green a whistle and a foul inside on Kent. And Kent has just picked up his fourth foul. So four on Darren Kent. Four on Darrell Arthur for their Kent, respective teams. Kent has not been a scorer tonight, Dave, but he's been great as far as distributing the basketball and helps set it up Beasley. So much for the plan of keeping Beasley on the bench through the media timeout. He has to report back in less than 20 seconds later. Not exactly what Frank Martin had in mind, but that's the way he's going to have to play. And just will go with that three out, two in look. Almost threw it away. What a save and then a travel by Khan. Kansas guard took the ball into the middle that time. Found himself in some heavy traffic to where he had to pass out. Didn't really have anybody to pass it to on the far side of the floor. That was all covered. Nobody was there. Almost rolled out of bounds early. Palmer's almost had a steal. Walker tracks it down. And Kansas State very concerned about the defensive play of Palmer's on that entry pass. Talk about the Boston College game and how he took over that game against BC with his defense. We'll have our timeout at the 11:58 mark. Kansas State leading by four. We're back after this from your friends at Phillips 66. Assist leaders brought to you by Cargill, collaborate, create, and succeed. These are the numbers from Big 12 play only. DJ Augustine continues to lead the way. Chalmers and Robinson combined for more than nine assists per game, and Cullen, the freshman, has 3.75 in Big 12 play. Mario Chalmers in this game so far here tonight with nine points and a couple of assists. And Kansas with the ball. Cullen, he's had a great game, 10 points. For pulling off the bench. Dave, no big surprise as strong as this league is this year that you're getting solid point guard play. Ron Collins can't hit. Young tracks it down. Hit a shot, same area a couple possessions ago. Both teams having trouble making shots here early in the second half. Kansas now 3 of 11. Kansas State 3 of 10. Wide no open post right now for K-State. The bank is open for Billy Walker. He's acting as though he thought that was supposed to be a pass. Maybe Beasley <laughs> around the rim. Connor's left open for three. And Khan tried to keep it alive. It goes out of bounds. It'll belong to the Wildcats. First half action, College Station in Texas and Texas A&M. And look at that for Mark Turgeon's Aggies. A huge lead over the 10th-ranked Longhorns. Texas A&M very strong at home this year. Has struggled on the road. Looked like Texas had recovered from a first weekend loss against Missouri. Now well, they're jumping in the aisles here in Ramlich Coliseum. And they're probably excited about the golf challenge coming up. And if you would like to 
find out more about it, go to ESPNGolf.com. Sign up your course as a host or find a local qualifying site in your area. Be a part of the search for America's Best Twosome. With a snowstorm coming in tonight about midnight, they're probably thinking about this basketball team right now. I'm sure they are. <laughs> snow or not, they're hoping that streak ends tonight. The streak of the Jayhawks here at Bramlage Coliseum, 19-0, 24 straight wins in Manhattan. And they'd like to party like it's 1983. Les Kraft, a huge hero for the Wildcats that day. A couple of late free throws as K-State beat KU 58-57 in 1983. The last time the Wildcats won on their home court. Will Walker, 15 points now in this game. Beasley's had to work hard for his 17. He's just 6 for 15 from the field in this game. Kansas has not done a lot of pressing throughout this early part of the season. A 1-2-2 zone press. They're doing a nice job of keeping their space in. Frank Martin talked about that earlier today. Guard spacing is going to be important against Kansas because their guards trap so well. Here's a 3 2 zone. The first zone that Kansas has played in a half court game all season. Ball and carries it with a three and a deep three. Foul by Pollen. A 10 point advantage by Kansas State. Not only their biggest of the game, but it matches the biggest deficit for the Jayhawks all year. And Kansas State has gotten good balance all evening long. Beasley got off his close start. Walker was hopping. He got into foul trouble. They've been sharing the basketball tonight. So the unbeaten Jayhawks in trouble in Manhattan. Rush. His three as well short. Beasley's got it. A lot of white shirts on that defensive board that time for Kansas State. Kansas can't even hit the open shots right now. Last three from long range have been uncontested. Three different players haven't been able to carry it. Now Pullen gives it up for Beasley. How about Pullen the last two possessions? Buries the three, then gives up the assist to the big fella. What'd you say? I can't hear you. <laughs> Ten straight by the Wildcats. Side on Sutton. Kansas is facing their biggest deficit of the year. They trailed by 10 at USC. Now trailing by a dozen here. Well, it's the only other unbeaten team in the land, Memphis, and they're beating Houston in the second half by 10. A lot of people think that it's one of only two remaining games in the regular season. It'll be tricky for Memphis. Another one being a game against Tennessee. Now Sutton has just picked up his third foul and goes over. Looks like he's suffering from cramps near the K-State bench. He draws the foul on that again. The pressure out on the perimeter. Kansas State having a hard time containing the dribble drive of the Kansas guards. Kansas guards able to get to the free throw line. Remember, Kansas a team that has struggled from the stripe early on this year. Five of six in this game. And bouncing all over the rim and then in for Chalmers. Chalmers three of three from the stripe. Ten points in this game. And Mike here helps Kansas set up that zone defense if they should decide to go with that pressure again. How does he do that? I mean, how do you get two in a row to dance on the rim like that? That's called a soft touch. <laughs> Kansas comes out of the press. They go man-to-man -man defense. Again, they have not been all that effective this evening stealing the ball, trying to handle those K-State guards. They've done a good job on the offensive end. You're right, but only two steals for the Jayhawks tonight. Pullen. And Darrell Arthur's playing with four fouls, clears the glass. And neither Walker nor Beasley was in that, that offensive rebound. Both of them well out on the floor. Chalmers, the foul here on Young, and that'll be 
three on Blake Young. Now Kansas State's doing a good job of plugging up the middle, so the front line of Kansas has been relatively ineffective in this ballgame. Looks like if Kansas is going to come back in this one, they're going to have to get it done with the ball handling of their guards and the ability to get in the middle of that K-State defense. Here's Russell Robinson on the drive, trying to give up the pass to Chalmers, but getting the foul first. And to back up what you're saying, Darnell Jackson has five points, Sasha Kahn just two points, and Arthur with eight, most of those coming in the first half. Arthur's going to have to be very cautious the rest of the way playing with those four fouls. And KU tonight, their free throws are saving and they're nine for ten from the line. And pull back within eight, four straight free throws for the Jayhawks. Walker, a three. That one go. Con with a long rebound. Well, Arthur's got to take a deep sigh of relief right there. He'd have been forced to try to stop the dribble drive. Walker took the three. That's a tough angle on that shot for Arthur. And Khan couldn't grab it. Well, here comes Clint Stewart slowing things down now for the Wildcats. That's a senior move by Clint Stewart. He'll go against another upperclassman in Brandon Rush. Arthur continues to win the man against Walker. Look at the open middle of the floor right there for K-State. Five out, no in look. And Blake Young just broke to the basket, nobody saw it. Walker tries another three, that won't go. Got his own rebound. That won't go. Here comes Robinson. He gives it up for Chalmers. Kansas never did have numbers in that transition game. What a block by Beasley. Once again, the Kansas guard taking it right at that K-State defense. And pulling for three. No. Robinson will track it down. Robinson can't get it to go. He goes strolling out of bounds. Beasley with another rebound. He's got six of those. You know, you appreciate the effort, but sometimes that's not a real good decision. That was a one-on-three break. Robinson just trying to spin that one up on the glass. Just as though he thought he was going to get fouled on that drive. Beasley again drawing the triple team. And a whistle and a foul here on Robinson as he picks up his second. 7.31 to go. Kansas State leading Kansas. These Wildcats, wild about their team right now as Kansas State leads it 57 49. Mike Beasley was not much of a story in the first half. That's changed a lot here in the second half. Ability to step out and hit the three. Once he shows that, he's able to have the defense come up and challenge him to put the ball on the floor. Of course, always moving without the basketball teammates. Always looking for him. Beasley lighted it up pretty well here in the second half. That's been kind of his modus operandi. Our Star Watch update. Brandon Rush all 12 of his points in the first half. Now sitting on the bench for the Jayhawks. And Michael Beasley, 19 points, really coming on strong here with also six rebounds in this contest. I was talking with Frank Martin earlier today. Split as the Wildcats just throw it away on the timeout. And he was saying about Beasley, he said he's never really been the go-to guy. He's always had someone else to pair with. And so it's hard for him to recognize the fact that he is the go-to guy for the Wildcats. Sometimes we have to force him into that. Well, he is the focal point of this offense, but he does have some help, especially the way Bill Walker is playing here tonight. Does not have to carry the entire load. And Beasley has just picked up his first foul of the game. It's the ninth team foul on the Wildcats, so it'll be the Jayhawks going to the line in a one and one for Darrell Arthur, who is a 66% free throw shooter. Kansas attacking quickly that last time down. Going to have to go after it that kind of passion the rest of the night. Last five points for KU have come from the free throw line. In fact, a 5-0 run for the Jayhawks. Jayhawks who trailed by a dozen back within a half dozen now. Bullen handles the ball out front a whole lot, even with Clint Stewart on the floor, on the floor right now for Kansas State. Beasley working on Daniel Jackson pulls up. Oh, he's smooth from the outside. 
Well, he's so quick on his release. He doesn't need a lot of room to take that jump shot. Stops a 6-0 run. Walker had to give some ground with his three fouls. And Jackson taking it right at him. Now Walker not really sliding his feet all that much. Tried to take that drive away by hanging a leg out. Fortunately for him, there was no contact. Which is now it's well Arthur on Beasley. When you want to go to him now with Arthur with four fouls, I think anybody Arthur's on, I think you want to attack. Walker goes around Jackson. Walker's been the best on the floor tonight as far as putting the ball on the floor, out on the perimeter, and finishing at the rim. He's shown better quickness than anybody else. How's this for a one-two punch? Walker and Beasley, a combined 38 points. And a foul here on Blake Young, who's just picked up his four. Blake Young getting a little talk to by the official right there, his reaction after that foul. But the last K-State possession, very impressive, the work of Bill Walker with the ball in his hand, out on the perimeter, a little pump fake. Fernell Jackson to slide by him, just a couple dribbles. He's in the front end of the rim and able to finish. You can see why they had him out on the perimeter earlier on this year before moving him to the power forward position. You bet. Now Robinson at the line. Jayhawks. Terrific at the line tonight, 12 of 13. But as it's playing out, they're trading points with Kansas State. That favors the Cats the rest of the way. It does. Now look at him from the field tonight. Tough, but this point three for three from the line for Russell Robinson. Make it four for four, and the Jayhawks 13 of 14. Six-point game under six minutes to go. Kansas State doing a good job of keeping Kansas at bay, keeping a two-possession lead or more. Got to think if Kansas is going to come back in this, and their guards going to have to take over and get them some extra possession by trying to get some steals. Steals use the lead to transition points. Look how patient Kansas State is in the offensive end. Now Stewart. Stewart left wide open right there. That's his role on this team right now. Handle the basketball, hit the open three. Little scoop shot by Sharon Collins. Wow. Oh, he is so quick at getting into the defense. He's the quickest of any of the Kansas guards. But again, Kansas gets a two, but trades up a three on the other end. Mm -hmm. By the way, tonight, the Wildcats are 11 for 24 from three-point range. They have another one? No, well short by Walker. Was pulled out an ISO play with Darrell Arthur. Arthur couldn't find the handle and then stepped on the baseline. That was going to be a pretty easy opportunity for Kansas because Arthur led the pack down the floor and the guard found him underneath but couldn't control the pass in, dropped it on the baseline. And the way split the 11 threes by the Wildcats. That's a season high for them from three point range. This is a team that normally shoots just 32% from three point range. They hit 10 threes their last time out against Iowa State, so that's two games in a row they've shot it well from deep. Quick spin move on the baseline. Arthur got help. Now Stewart almost lost it to Rush. Look at the help defense. Beasley, three! Good help defense from Kansas. Good court awareness by Kansas State. Found an open shooter and another clutch shot for the Wildcats. The Jayhawks down to their final timeout. Michael Beasley, four for four from three-point range here tonight. Well, Kansas going with their staple right there, and that's the defense. A couple guards looking for the steal, on diving for the basketball. And with all that defensive effort going after the ball, no surprise that Michael Beasley finds himself wide open out on the perimeter. 
Kansas hustling all over the floor, looking to get the steal, couldn't get it. Kansas State gets points. It seems like tonight's split, the Wildcats have had more than their fair share of loose balls. Well, they've gotten it better than 50% of the ones that have come loose, but they have played with a lot of poise here this evening. They have. I think a lot of it came from the start that they had. Remember, they jumped up 11-5 in the first four and a half minutes, and then they withstood the first Kansas assault at them, got tied at 14, and then K-State went back to work. They played with great confidence here in the second half. A lot of people thought there were two real keys for the Wildcats tonight. Their guards playing with poise, which they have only two steals by the Jayhawks, and Michael Beasley not getting in foul trouble. He hasn't been in foul trouble at all. Only one foul tonight, and as you see, 24 points on four of four shooting from three-point range. And that first half is now a distant memory. We went just three of ten from the floor. Kansas State in a zone defense now. They want to force Kansas to stay out on the perimeter. Force them to hit some deep shots. Collins, he had a chip shot and then banked home by Arthur. A foul here on Collins. And we've got a timeout. The 346 mark. Kansas State trying to win in Manhattan against the Jayhawks for the first time in almost a quarter century. Okay, State team has done since 1983. Can they close the deal against the number two team in the land, the unbeaten Kansas Jayhawks, 67-59 right now, K State. Here's the advanced look at upcoming games brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. We're ready in advance. And for Kansas State, they go to Missouri on Saturday in Columbia. Will all those suspended players be back for the Tigers? Then two home games with Nebraska and Oklahoma State, and they travel out to Lubbock, Texas. For the Jayhawks, they go to Colorado next. And the big Monday showdown with the Missouri Tigers. The Baylor Bears come in a week from Saturday. Easily would have counted had it gone. He's fouled on the play. Kansas State with a set play coming in after that last time on. An opportunity to set up Michael Beasley. Take a look at the upcoming games for Kansas State. As you get into February and March, they talk about signature wins. This would be a signature win if Wildcats can hold on here tonight. Signature win with an exclamation point. The only team to beat KU if they can hang on for 342. With Frank Martin urging Beasley on, saying this one is far from over. Beasley missing that free throw. 24.6 rebounds for this phenomenal freshman who, in my mind, split, he's already wrapped up freshman of the year honors in the country. Well, there's a whole lot of basketball to be played. There are other some contenders out there, but you talk about a guy helping turn a program around and playing well in the clutch here tonight. Chalmers charging in. No call, no whistle on that play. Now a little trap in the backcourt. Kansas guards have really driven the ball hard here in the second half. There's been a lot of contact. Now they're going to have to play some hard defense, see if they can get some extra possessions. Robinson trying to reach around on Cullen. He commits the foul. That's 18 fouls. Now on the Jayhawks, three on Robinson. So Cullen will be going to the line, shooting a one and one. Cullen, by the way, perfect at the line tonight, five for five. Playing with a whole lot of confidence. You never believe that this is a first year player. They leaned on him heavily early in the year with Clint Stewart out with that hamstring injury. They'll get the bonus. The Wildcats, their fans, circled on their calendar way back from the 29th of January, 1983, the last time K-State tasted victory against KU here in Manhattan. They've never won here at Bramlage Coliseum. 19 straight times the Wildcats have come in here to win it. And a lot of the sports shows, fans calling and say, hey, let's go over and play the game at air. <laughs> Let's reopen that building. <laughs> Kansas needs to attack quickly. Chalmers lost the handle. And then Robinson tried to save it. It'll go to K-State. 15 turnovers for the Jayhawks. And that's the last thing that Bill Self needed was an empty possession where they come away with nothing. If you get later in the ballgame, Kansas will be forced to try to apply more pressure, whether it be man-to-man -man in the half court or some kind of full court pressure. Then last possession split, just the presence of Beasley, Beasley in the paint really changed things for Brandon Rush. Holland, he goes right down the middle. And a foul! The defense just went away that time. Holland put the ball on the floor, penetrated the lane. 
And the blue jerseys disappeared. It was like the parting of the waters. Push the ball to the offensive end. Robinson on his tail. And there's Brandon Rush stepping outside of the lane instead of stopping the dribble drive. Defense got out of the way. How about Pullen's night? 18 points for Jacob Pullen, the freshman. Grabbing some of that thunder away from Beasley and Walker. And a foul here on Sutton. That's four on Sutton, who's playing in the place for the most part of Andre Gilbert. He started for Gilbert tonight. Andre Gilbert suspended for this game, out for disciplinary actions, breaking team rules, out indefinitely for K-State. So that'll be Chalmers at the line. Chalmers, 13 points tonight. trying to keep Kansas at least in the neighborhood. The Wildcats have led by as many as a dozen in this game. Kansas 20 and 0 on the year. The Wildcats 4 and 0 in conference play. Trying to go to 5 and 0 for the first time in more than a decade. And the Wildcats trying to assume first place in the Big 12. An opportunity for Kansas to get points with the clock stopped and also to catch their breath. They're going to need to play solid defense. Small lineup on the floor right now. Four solid defenders, small and quick. Well, good work by Pullen to get around a double team. Young can't get it to go. Tip one by Walker. How about Kansas State not just killing clock? They're attacking the basket. Split if the Wildcats hang on and win this game. They're going to look back and say, boy, the work they did on the offensive glass tonight, one of the big reasons why. Especially in that first half, that was huge. Led to their lead at the intermission. And a whistle and another foul inside. We'll send Collins to the line. Kansas is attacking with all their guards now every time down. They're either looking to get a layup or get the outlet pass for a possible three or get a foul, stop the clock, and shoot free throw. Right now, this is a guards game for Kansas. Again, the 12-point deficit largely due to Jacob Cohen, who's had an outstanding game. In fact, only one point shy of his career high. 12-point deficit, the biggest of the year for the Jayhawks. They trail by 10 at USC, trailing by a dozen here. And this free throw there by Sharon Collins. Able to get the second one to go. 16 of 18 from the line for KU. over the back. And Russell Robinson with the foul, and that will do it for Robinson, his fifth of the game. That's a big break for Kansas State right there. That was a very poor pass into the middle of the floor, off the basket. Kansas State lucky to get a foul on that. That foul kind of bails them out. Plus, it takes a very good defender off the floor for Kansas. A lot of people wondering, could the Wildcats handle the pressure that the Jayhawks would apply tonight? And I think the answer is a definitive, yes, they can. Yeah, they're very good at handling the basketball. They were very good with their spacing, so Kansas really wasn't able to get the double teams and traps that they're normally able to pick up. So with Robinson fouling out here, each team using this as sort of like a timeout. Robinson leaves with a half a dozen points in this game, along with three assists. They've lost one of their four generals. And the Jocks, as you mentioned, split. They've been largely depending on their guards, especially here in the second half. Well, Kansas has combo guards. They don't really have a, com a point guard and a shooting guard per se. They just have guards that can handle it, run the offense, and shoot and score. Kansas State making them all look pretty normal tonight. Michael Beasley's had the big second half. He's anything but normal, Beasley. Beasley with 25 points, a half a dozen rebounds. Again, 1983, the last time that Kansas State won on their home floor against the Jayhawks. 24 straight years they've been denied. Beasley, very outspoken, as a freshman saying, we'll beat Kansas in Manhattan. We'll beat them in Lawrenceville. We'll beat them in Africa, necessarily. We'll beat them anywhere. 
certainly taken notice, but he has backed up his talk split with another great game. Oh, and Bill Self said that a guy's averaging 25 points and about 13 rebounds per ball game. He can do a little bit of talking, although I'm sure Kansas appreciate it. But that's really backed it up here this evening. How about that? Talking to the senior Stewart saying, come on, hit those free throws. Stewart able to hit the second one. Back to a 12 point Wildcat lead with just over two and a half to go. Let's see if they set up some ball picks on the He's got a foul here by Blake Young, and he has just picked up number five. That's going to force Frank Martin to go a little bit deeper on his bench. Now remember, he does not have Andre Gilbert, another talented wing player. But I think we're going to get Chris Merriweather who's going to appear for the first time tonight. And Merriweather a walk-on for K-State. Well, the thing about Merriweather, he has played some over the last over last year. In fact, there were some games where he came in and was kind of a game changer. In fact, one game at Kansas last year, he was a little bit quicker than some of his teammates, and he kept Kansas State hanging a little tougher in that ball game. So he has not only gotten time last year more so than this season, but he's got the kind of quickness that can really help his team and offset Kansas. In 1983, the last time that K-State won here in Manhattan, Ronald Reagan was the president. The stamp was only 20 cents. The very first cell phone was introduced in 1983 and split. You still don't have one. Hey, I was an athlete back in 83, <laughs> too. <laughs> Good technology, I know. Final episode of MASH. The average household income. Hey, that's, that'd be a raise for me. And gas was only a buck 29 a gallon. You could get by on 20,000 back then. <laughs> yeah, you could. We'll see. Will this be the year that that amazing streak for the Jayhawks comes to a close? There's both coaches, both teams saying oh, they weren't thinking at all about the streak. That was really more for the media and the fans of these two teams. And you talk to the people at Kansas and they didn't want to talk about it, but they say, not on my watch. They can do it on somebody else's. But that look right there tells you all you need to know about the scoreboard right now. Another streak could come to a close for the Jayhawks. It'd be their first loss of the year if they don't come back in this one. And a lot of people think, well, that's okay. You know, there's that theory split that a loss about this time of the year actually does a team more good than harm. Well, it is a marathon. I mean, there are going to be tough nights on the floor. The question is, how can you bounce back from it? Reflected there, a little bit by Chalmers. And again, there's that spacing. Get the double team, pass out of it, find an open team. Here. And then Rush immediately, once Merriweather touched the ball, they fouled him. Merriweather, by the way, just one for five from the line all year. That's coaching right there. That's identifying the personnel on the floor when he touches the ball. A guy who's got a foul to give, go ahead and give it. Both teams in the double bonus now. More than 10 team fouls on the Jayhawks this half. Also more than 10 on the Wildcats. Merriweather mentioned a walk on from Jacksonville, Florida. Now one for six from the line this year. And he hit the second of two. Well, the lead a dozen again with just over two minutes to go. Kansas can cut into it a little bit right here with either a two or a three. Kansas State's on full court pressure wants to slow them down. Ron Collins looking to get some help trying to get that ball inbound. Hey guys, wake up. Let's realize the situation on the floor. We're seeing some full court pressure. Here's Collins pushing it up now. Nice scoop move again by Sharon Collins. The last thing Kansas State wants right now is to follow to stop that puck. Slow down the offense if you can. Slow it down when you get the basketball. Spread the floor. Force Kansas to run it sideline to sideline. Stay away from the cracks and the double team. Simply a game to keep away right now. And a timeout taken by Frank Martin. He wants his team to do just what you're saying. Spread the court. 
Let's eat up as much clock as we possibly can, and who knows? This could be the year the Wildcats end the streak. Certainly in good shape now with a 10-point lead, 140 to go. They say it ain't bragging if you can back it up, and what Michael Beasley and Billy Walker and Jacob Pullen, the freshman, have done tonight for K-State, it has been truly remarkable. Well, again, there is the quote. There's been several months to go ahead and digest that. This is we plan to beat them at home. We go to beat them at their house. Go we'll play him anywhere. Think that we can handle the Jayhawks, and they certainly backed it up tonight. One thing that stands out about this Kansas State team, Dave, is they have gone out and beaten some teams in this league by wide margins. A 25 point win, a 16 point win, a 21 point win, and then the close game at Oklahoma, just a two point win. But they have blown out some teams in league play, much like the Jayhawks have. And tonight they've outplayed Kansas. Well, Kansas State has been wondering who will be that third piece of the puzzle to join them. And tonight it was Jacob Pullen with 18 points to join Beasley, who has 25, and Walker, who has 19. And Clint Stewart has stepped up and hit some clutch shots. So they have distributed the basketball. It hasn't been a one or a two man show. This has been a solid team effort. Well, it certainly has. A lot of the talk coming in was hey, the Wildcats have great players, so they have a great Team. I think tonight they've proven they do have a good team. Now Memphis winning tonight at Houston. They stay unbeaten. They go to 20 and 0 on the year with their win against Houston tonight down in Texas. This guy right here, Jacob Pullen for me split. He has been a big difference maker in this contest, handling the pressure of the Kansas guards, meanwhile scoring 18 points himself. Tenth time this year he's been in double figures, averaging about eight points per ball game over his last five games. But even better than that for him is a great assist to turnover ratio. Five assists for every turnover. So this is a freshman that's coming along quickly for Kansas State. The other thing we should start to talk about for Kansas State with a win here tonight, a home win against the Jayhawks. They would go to 5-0 and in conference play. The Jayhawks would fall to 5-1. and well, I'll tell you what, you're going to have a dogfight then in the Big 12 race. Three-pointer, Chalmers. He got it. Big turnaround there for KU as they pull it within seven. Kansas State doing a good job. One, get the basketball inbounds. Make sure that you don't have a turnover without getting it in and starting that clock. The other thing we need to start thinking about, the students should be going right over our back onto the floor. That's true. The body gear on. Easily giving it up. These are precious seconds against KU. And now Robinson picks up the foul. Well, that, Robinson had already fouled out of this game. I guess that they had a scoring change and moved him to four fouls, and now he's just picked up his fifth foul. Looks like Roderick Stewart is going to come in for Robinson, so they've got another good defender to go out on the floor. The team's using this as an opportunity to get their teams over to their bench where they can give some instru instructions for the last minute and three seconds. Right, I'm a little confused. Now, I'm the guy that did the fifth down game over at Missouri with <laughs> the Tigers in Colorado, but on the stats monitor here, they actually have six fouls on Russell Robinson. This isn't the NBA. Well, they got some NBA types playing in this game. In the official scorer's book, though, we are told he officially has five fouls. Now, on the stats monitor we've been following all night here, he had five a few moments ago, and he picked up his sixth, but he must have given one of his other fouls previously in this game to someone else. He gave that one to Chalmers earlier on the night, and it didn't change it in the stats monitor that we have. And there's that kid again. Oh. By the way, nine for nine from the line for the kid. Jacob Pullen. A point here would give him a new career high. And that's the kind of career high you want as a freshman. 20 points against your arch rival to perhaps break one of the most incredible streaks in college basketball history. Kent pulls it down. He went after the rebound harder than anybody else. The fans can feel it now. The Wildcats split. They look at the Xavier loss earlier this 
year is an aberration over the way they've been playing for eight weeks. You'd have to say the way they have started Big 12 play has been nothing short of remarkable. The two-point win at Oklahoma when the Sooners were at full strength, and then to blow out Texas A&M, and then couple that with maybe a double-figure win against the previous unbeaten Jayhawks. Really a great run for Frank Martin and the Wildcats. That Savior game threw up some red flags for Kansas State. They went to practice, looked to try to get better, found they had some weaknesses. It gave the coaches something to talk about, and they have corrected some of the problems they had. Rush for three. Finally gets some points. Those are his first three points of the second half. And a quick timeout, the last timeout for the Jayhawks. Well, Kansas calls their last timeout. They're fighting right to the end. You've got to give them credit. The Jayhawks, so proud they've won not only 20 straight this year, but dating back to the middle of a couple of years ago, they won 68 of their last 75. A truly remarkable run. 34 of their last 35 overall. Kansas looking to drive the basketball, get points, maybe free throws to follow, then pop the ball back out if it's not there. Finally, Brandon Rush able to hit one from deep. Well, by the way, the student section here at Brownless Coliseum, they have filled the aisles. They're getting ready to storm this court here at Bramlage Coliseum. And we are right in front of the student section. We are certainly in trampled territory. I mean, these guys are going to come right over our back and out onto this court. And it is pretty warm down here. I mean, there are a lot of people around right behind us. And that aisle that you're talking about is full, I believe, is right behind you. Now, these yellow shirts, I don't think there are enough of them. They protect us, but I'm not <laughs> sure they can handle the throng behind us. Here is Michael Beasley, and these Wildcats are going to perhaps break the most incredible streaks in college basketball history, certainly in Big 12 history. Kansas winning 19 straight here at Bramlage Coliseum, 24 straight overall in Manhattan. Walker. Is that the exclamation point? Wow. Collins again fighting to the end. And no timeouts remaining for KU. And Chalmers whistled for the foul. will go to the line. Remember, Walker picked up three fouls in the first half. He's played the second half without any foul. And nine more points here in the second half. 21 on the night. Only 13 turnovers for K-State tonight split. So Frank Martin's club may have really handled one of the best defenses in the entire country in the Kansas Jayhawks here tonight. You know, and maybe one of the keys was that first five minutes. A lot of people thought that the Wildcats had come in maybe a little too amped up. Kansas has been in all kinds of big games with the personnel that they've had over the last couple of years, home and on the road at tournament time. But this is kind of an upstart program here in Manhattan, one that had been getting better really over the last several years. Got over some hurdles last year, won some close games under Bob Huggins that they hadn't been able to win in previous seasons. It looked like Frank looks like Frank Martin's getting ready to take them another step forward. People, some naysayers saying, well, Frank Martin was he the right choice for the Wildcats. Right now, the guy could win a mayoral race here in Manhattan. Well, the thing that he has done is he has captured this opportunity. And that's what it is, an opportunity to show what you can do at this level. And he was saying, you know, with the way they've been playing of late and all the accolades that he is getting, he said, you know, all of a sudden I'm a genius. And, you know, that to the victor go the spoils and certainly the way his Wildcats have played. But the way they look at it, look, it's a 16-leg race, and this is leg five for them. 16, of course, being the number of games they play in conference. Are they going to win or lose tonight? They're coming back tomorrow to go to practice to try to get better for the weekend. We already reviewed their upcoming schedule. They're currently on Saturday. The final seconds click off. The streak is dead. The Wildcats win it.
12,000 fans here at Bramlage Coliseum spilling out onto the court. A huge celebration as Kansas State, for the first time since 1983, has knocked off the Kansas Jayhawks in Manhattan. The streak does end tonight. Four players in double figures led by that man, Michael Beasley, with 25 points. Beasley, true to his word, saying that the Wildcats would be able to knock off the Jayhawks, and they have done just that, handing KU their first loss of the year. And the Wildcats go to 5-0 in Big 12 play. Beasley with 25, joined by Bill Walker with 22. Jacob Pullen with a career-high 20 tonight, and Clint Stewart with 11. And the Wildcats able to win this one by the final score of 84-75. No room left on the basketball floor. It's standing room only. We got any seat we want back up here in the house. <laughs> Well, it was quite a show by the Kansas State basketball team, not quite a show of support by their fans. They were here early through the night, through the morning. Donuts delivered this morning, pizzas delivered this afternoon. Got to feel happy for the student body. They were rewarded with a great effort from their team here tonight. And split right now, this court here at Grand Lodge Coliseum has turned into one giant mosh pit. Willie the Wildcat. These players are going to be escorted off if they had a ticker tape parade. They'd be holding it inside Bramlage Coliseum right now. What about Aggieville? It's deserted. Oh, <laughs> they're all here. It won't be for long. I'm sure these 12,000 fans are going to parade right through campus and celebrate Beasley and Walker and Pullen and all the rest as the Wildcats pull off. A big upset win over the Kansas Jayhawks. In football season, they take down the goalposts in situations like this. So the basketball standard's still in place. Well, this will certainly send a message throughout the land as Kansas loses for the first time. And now there's only one unbeaten team left, and that would be the Memphis Tigers, who won tonight against Houston. They go to 20-0 and on the year. All the pressure will be on them now to be the remaining unbeaten. The first team maybe to go through a year unbeaten since Bob Knight's Indiana Hoosiers back in 1976. You know, and you wonder if their schedule will be tough enough that it will get them set up for the postseason like maybe the schedule of the Big 12. There were a lot of people, I think, nationally thought that Kansas State was a two-man basketball team. It was Michael Beasley and, and Bill Walker that there really wasn't much else here to compliment them or support them. But I think anybody who saw this game here tonight saw a different looking Kansas State basketball team. Some team that had some experience out at the wings and had some backup players to come off that bench. You look at the bench points here tonight with a guy like Jacob Pullen coming out. Dominic Sutton played well. Darren Kent played well. The bench, a big factor in this win for K-State here this evening. Bench, offensive rebounding, 16 of those for the Wildcats here tonight, and then handling the pressure of those KU guards. Yeah, it was what they did and what they didn't do. The offensive rebounds, the plus, and didn't give up the steals, and tonight the way Kansas was shooting the ball, having a hard time buying baskets, whether it was long range or finishing drives to the basket, they couldn't get steals, couldn't get layups in transition. That offense kind of bogged down a little bit. So the Kansas Jayhawks losing for the first time this year and the Wildcats beating the Jayhawks for the first time ever at Bramlage Coliseum. The first time they have beaten the Jayhawks since 1983 as Kansas State have turned this conference upside down. The Wildcats at 5-0 now in conference play. The Jayhawks three straight Big 12 championships and now it's K-State there in the driver's seat. Take a look at Kansas State, and they were the preseason four pick in this conference. And you take a look right now, sitting on top of the league, Kansas Baylor with one loss, along with Texas going into play tonight. Texas was losing big to Texas A&M earlier tonight. Nebraska and Missouri were playing a close one. So once again, 
It's the Kansas Jayhawks knocking off, or excuse me, the Kansas State Wildcats knocking off the Kansas Jayhawks 84 to 75. For Paul Splitter and our entire ESPN Plus crew, Dave Armstrong saying so long. Don't forget, tune in Saturday. Studio 66 starts at 12.30 with K-State at Missouri or Baylor at Texas. For more information, log on to ESPN Plus. Log on to ESPN-plus.com. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN Regional Television, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports. Good night from Manhattan.